Okay, I wanted to um, give you an example, go through an example of finding the uh, derivative of a function using the limit limit definition of the derivative. Okay. All right, so let's start out by writing down the, uh, defi the uh, limit definition of the derivative. So f prime of x, okay, um, it can be shown that this is just the limit as delta x goes to zero of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. Okay. So in some books they use, instead of delta x, um, instead of delta x, they may use h, uh, they may use s, um, they can use different letters. So the delta x, remember, it's just a, it's a single variable. All right? it, it just means that the point, um, if you remember, it's, you have a fixed point, right? That's where your tangent point is. And then there's another point on the graph. And so as that point gets closer and closer to the fixed point, delta x is getting smaller. Okay. Um, so that's all that means. Okay, and this, this is actually coming from the fact of, you know, you're taking, uh, basically this is coming from the slope, right, of the secant line. And then when you take the limit, that secant line starts to approach the tangent line. Okay, and so you end up getting the expression of, of the, the derivative expression for the function. But, but here anyway, we want to apply that to, um, to what we're trying to find here. Okay, so, uh, by the way, this is also called, um, this ratio is commonly referred to as the difference quotient. Um, they, that's, um, sometimes they uh, is brought up actually in pre-calculus, they talk about this, uh, but uh, this is definitely where we're going to apply it, okay? We're going to take the limit of the difference quotient as delta x goes to zero. All right, so our function that we're working with is one over x. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, fill out the components of this definition. So we're going to have the limit as delta x goes to zero of, okay, so we're taking this, this is our function, okay? So remember, we're going to evaluate that function at x plus delta x. So you replace the x with x plus delta x. So we're going to have one over x plus delta x minus okay, the original function. Okay, all divided by delta x. And it's always a good habit um, that when you're taking the limit of something that's, you know, you know, not a single variable or a single expression, uh, something like this, where you don't, where you have what's called a compound fraction or complex fraction, it's always a good idea to put parentheses or, or brackets around that expression. It's just looks, it looks better, right? Um, it looks more, you know, more organized. All right, just a small minor tip there. Okay, so now what we need to do, all right, um, is to find the limit of this expression. So again, um, this is where first you try to do a, a direct substitution. So if you do that, you plug in, or if you let uh, delta x go to zero, on top here, you're gonna get one over x minus one over x, um, and then you're gonna get zero down here. So we end up getting zero over zero. So that's, an, that's one of those indeterminate forms. So zero over zero, by the way, is not equal to one. Okay. So this tells us, so basically this tells us at this moment um, that we need to rewrite the, the expression in order to take the limit of this. Okay. All right, so let's do the um, scratch work down here. Okay, so we're going to have one over x plus delta x minus one over x divided by delta x. Okay, so just doing the scratch work and then whatever we end up getting, we can take eventually take the limit of that. Okay. Um, so we have, right, so basically we have, um, we have this compound fraction or complex fraction, if you will. Um, so what we ideally what we want to do is uh, we want to make we want to put this over a common denominator. So our common denominator is going to be x times x plus delta x. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the first 
I'm going to multiply this side by x. Okay. Actually, um, x over x, right? Okay. And then, right, because right, we have an x here, so if I multiply this one by x, I need to multiply the bottom by x. And then this side, I need to multiply this one by x plus delta x. Okay. And therefore, I also need to multiply the bottom part by x plus delta x. Again, the reason for doing this is so that we can come up with a common denominator, right? That is another skill that, that we're utilizing here from pre-calculus. All right. So um, let's go ahead and rewrite this. Um, this is going to give us, um, so we have x over x times x plus delta x minus x plus delta x over x times x plus delta x. And all that is divided by delta x. Now the thing here is that you have to be extremely careful. Uh, make sure that you put, you know, put parentheses around this because if you don't, right, if you don't have this, then um, you're going to think that this is going to be just, you know, you're gonna have minus x, and then you're not going to have a, a negative here. Okay, so make sure you do put parentheses around this. So that's why it's always a good habit um, to write it out this way. Okay. All right, so now um, let's proceed from here. All right, so we're going to get x minus x plus delta x, right? all divided by x plus delta x times x. And this is all divided by delta x. So keeping in mind that this is the main division problem. Okay. So now, okay, um, and again, remember that we combine this under the same denominator. Right? That was the purpose of doing this over here. So again, think of this. So you have basically this fraction divided by this term. So Sometimes you know, it's helpful to put, you know, make, put this over one so that now you can see it's going to be this, and then you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this one. So that's going to give us, okay, we're going to have, I'm going to go ahead and simplify the top part. Um, actually, I'll do that next step. We have this times x, x times x plus delta x times delta x, oh, one over delta x. So taking the reciprocal of this term. Okay, um, so now let's go ahead and simplify this a little more. So on the top, we get x minus x minus delta x divided by x times x plus delta x times one over delta x. And then um, we're going to get uh, zero here, x minus x is zero, and we're left with a minus delta x on top. And all that is divided by okay, delta x. And I'll keep it in the, just to, I'll keep it in this order just to be consistent. We have x times x plus delta x times delta x. Okay. So this too, I just, you know, the delta x here is in the denominator, so I can just write like this. And so now you can see that delta x's will cancel out. Okay. And again, that was the purpose of simplifying this is that we want, you know, we want that term um, that we want the term that was giving us that zero and zero to cancel out. Okay. So we're left with um, keeping in mind that we have minus here. So we have minus one over x times x plus delta x. Okay. So now this is the simplified function of, of this one, of this expression. So now we can go ahead and take the limit of this as, x, as delta x goes to zero. And so then here we can do a direct substitution, right? So by letting delta x be equal to zero. So this is going to give us minus one over x squared. Okay. And so that turns out to be the derivative of this function. So therefore, um, f 
prime of x is equal to minus one over x squared. And later you will learn uh, that there's another process to do this. Um, you can rewrite one over x as x to the minus one and then use a power rule. Okay, so you can bring down the negative one, you have minus x and then subtract one of, of the top part of the top exponent. And so that you end up getting this. Okay? Uh, but again, so this is taking the derivative using this definition. Um, so that's a uh, pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good application of this. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop here. Um, so again soon.